that, that Shashi built. But <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Jared. All right, hi everybody. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, a new package that Julia Computing released very recently. Can't, can't hear me? Oh. All right, hi, how's that? Okay, uh, so I'm going to be talking about a package that Julia Computing released fairly recently called Julia DB. Uh, so what, what, is, what is this for? Uh, so basically every language has file I.O. Uh, and we have JLD, JLD2, HDF5, uh, the file I.O. packages. Those are all great. Uh, they, you know, if, you're, if you're reading and writing single files, that works very well. Uh, but what we see more and more nowadays is multi-file data sets, uh, really big multi-file data sets. And when you have that, it starts to get a little bit more difficult to manage. Uh, and you, t you tend to need a little more infrastructure. Uh, and also, I think uh, Julia has been very focused on compute, essentially, in-memory operations, uh, and we haven't done all that much about uh, persistent operations. Uh, so I, I, we wanted to try to kind of beef up our, our capabilities in that area. Uh, so this is, this is what we tried to make, and basically the idea is to make a kind of a framework uh, or umbrella package, I guess, if you will, uh, for handling big multi-file data sets and combining together uh, storage, parallelism, uh, and various operations. Uh, so it combines a bunch of existing uh, packages uh, like TextParse, uh, Julia's own distributed library, uh, our index tables package, Dagger, and a bunch of other things. Uh, so the, uh, the, the basic data model of this so far is, I would say, it's kind of sparse array-like, uh, which means you have some number of dimensions, and then there are values, uh, and you, it maps indexes to values similarly to an array, uh, but it looks more like a, a relational table uh, when you look at it, uh, since it's, uh, it's more sparse array-like. Uh, or if as, as a special case, if you just want to deal with rows kind of more data frame like, uh, you, can, you don't have to have any indexes, we can just use the numbers one to n as just indexes of which row uh, do you have instead. Uh, and actually we would like to be able to support both dense and sparse data. Uh, it's, kind of a, it's kind of the stretch goal of this, uh, so that you could use the same uh, parallel uh, and s big storage framework uh, for handling uh, like stacks of, of dense data, like maybe a collection of images or something. Uh, and you could use a lot of the same infrastructure for that as for dealing with more sparse or relational-like data. Uh, so that's one of the goals. Um, and of course, I don't have to sell you on why you might want to do this with Julia. Uh, you know, if you, if you th given that it's done in Julia, you have lots of data types that it can handle, uh, and and doing it all natively in Julia means there's no mapping back and forth, and there, you're not going to you're not going to miss out on any data types. It can handle everything, uh, and it can automatically leverage uh, our JIT compiler. You know, if you type in a, a query, as it were, uh, you can put in some anonymous functions and compose a few things together, and that will get compiled, and you'll have uh, you'll have everything JITed just like, you know, because it is anyway. Um, and since we're, we're using uh, Shashi's dagger package, so it can do actually both distributed and out of core computation, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, and we, call, we can load files in place, or we also have our own uh, mmappable binary format that I'll show you a bit about in a moment. Uh, Uh, so we don't have a huge number of operations uh, so far, but these are some of the operations we have. Um, there's indexing, map, filters, uh, reduces. Uh, so I, so I, the API is, is a, a work in progress. I should say, actually, there's a, there's a bit of a jumble of kind of a array terminology and uh, relational terminology in here, and, I, and because it, it can actually support a lot of both operations. And I think the, I, the plan as I see it now is that we're really just going to support both. Uh, I think sometimes you want to think about things in more of an array-like way. If you're thinking about the data as having dimensions and you want to reduce along one of the dimensions, you can say reduce dim, and that should be fine. Uh, uh, or if you're thinking more in terms of tables and you want to think of it as like an aggregation or a select, then you can use those words too. So I think we're probably just going to support both, uh, is what I would say at this point. Uh, and I'd, I'd really rather just demo it than keep talking about it. So, so here we go. I'll just uh, run Julia. And I'll start it with four processors in this case.
And I just have my, I've got my demo script and my command history here. Uh, so I'll just do using JuliaDB. Uh, this has been registered as a package, so you can install this. Uh, we've released this at a pretty early stage, uh, I should say, so it was uh, a little bit earlier than maybe even we were comfortable with. Uh, so it's a pretty early stage. We have not even enabled pre-compilation for it. Uh, we need to add some pre-compile statements and stuff. There's a bunch of uh, compiler delays, which is, you know, it's unfortunate. Uh, so it takes a good couple seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it would, would be much nicer to have it, uh, it pre-compiled. Uh, but all right, so I have a, I have a, a little sample data set here uh, that's in this data directory. Uh, so this is from the, uh, the TrueFX uh, currency trading data set. I've got this reduced way down. So this whole data set is something like 200 gigabytes. Uh, and we have loaded this en entire data set. I think it's the biggest thing we've used this on so far. But here I, I took, uh, took a very, very small subset of it. But there are four files. So it's still, there, there's some parallelism there. Uh, and I can just say load files, uh, and I give it the path to the directory uh, those are in, and I say index calls, which says which of the columns do I want to consider to be the indexes. Uh, and so I, I happen to know the first two are going to be the indexes, and I tell it there's no header, and I can give uh, names for the columns, if, because if the files don't have the, the column uh, headers in them. If they, if they did have the headers in there, it would pick it up automatically, of course. But uh, so I'll tell it to load it. There are going to be more uh, enjoyable compilation latencies. All right, and now it says, uh, so it says metadata for four out of four files can be loaded from cache. And it, it says that because I have loaded these files before. Uh, and I'll show you what it does. This is, this is, I think, mostly compiling. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be, it would be faster the, the second time. All right, so this is uh, 9.6 million rows in four chunks, it tells you. And it looks like this. So the, uh, the index columns were the currency pair and a time. And then I have a bid and ask price for each one. Uh, so what happened was, if I look at that directory, uh, there's now a dot JuliaDB directory in there. Uh, and there's not a lot in there right now, but it has uh, it has this file in there which basically stores an index of what's in those CSV files. Uh, so the first time you load things, it creates this file, uh, and that what that lets it do is in the future when you load it, it does not actually have to parse through and read all the CSV files. Uh, that metadata tells it basically where everything is. So if you start operating on it and you operate on a subset of it, it, it will only load the subset that it needs from disk. Uh, now I can do array-like operations, like I can index it for uh, dollars to yen and for over all the time values. And so I get back the answer, but you see there's something kind of interesting, which is in this table printed, it said 9 million rows in four chunks. This one, it just said table with two chunks, and it doesn't tell you the number of rows. And the reason is that it doesn't know yet. Uh, it does a lot of operations lazily. Uh, for performance, so actually it's, if it doesn't tell you the number of rows, it means it actually hasn't finished this operation yet. Uh, and now I can do a few more common kinds of uh, filtering kinds of operations, so I can say a select from that, uh, everything where the time has a day of week equal to one, so that's going to give me the Mondays. And then I could say filter for uh, bid price, uh, of any, anywhere the, uh, the price of a dollar is over 99.5 on a Monday, and I can get that. Uh, as a sanity check, I might see uh, if there's anywhere where the bid price is bigger than the ask price, which should never be true. And indeed, it comes back empty table, so that's, that's good. Uh, so these are you know, very simple kinds of data operations is what we have so far, but they're, they're running in parallel, and this is pretty scalable. As I said, we did this on, uh, I think, the, the full version of this data set, which was, I think, 4 billion rows. Uh, so it's pretty pretty decent scale. Uh, there's one more thing you can do. All right, so there's another uh, kind of mode of operation, if you will, uh, is to call this function ingest, uh, which is exactly the same, except there's a second directory argument, uh, which is an output directory. And what, what it will do uh, if you run this, oh, it already exists. OK, I will, I'll remove it. So 
So you give it an output directory, uh, and what it will do is actually uh, load all the CSV files and convert it to a more efficient binary format and just create a new copy uh, of the data set in that location. Uh, and then that will let it load that will let it load it much, much faster uh, in the future. All right, and if we look at what's in there, it's a little bit interesting. So that directory looks like this. Uh, so you can see there's a whole bunch of files. Uh, there's an index file here, uh, which is similar to the uh, index file uh, before, uh, but then there's also a bunch of files, some of which are Julia serialized data, and then the other of which are these .mmap files, which basically means it's a memory image that can be mmapped. Uh, for really efficient access. So this is this other format, and then you know in the f in the future, uh, the good thing about this uh, is that it's all it's all kind of thoroughly pre-digested, so you don't have to give it any options. And in the future, you can just say load. Uh, and in fact, if you notice, that was instantaneous because it sort of it realizes that it already has all that stuff cached, so it doesn't have to do anything. But uh, in the future, you can just say load that directory, and it just happens. And yes, I should mention again, Shashi did most of this. It might be hard to believe that Shashi also did this, but it, Shashi does everything. It's really true. 